We must strive to accomplish complete enlightenment for the sake of uh, liberating infinite kind mother sentient beings and it's for that reason uh, we must cultivate the altruistic motivation or what we call bodhicitta motivation with that kind of motivation we should all participate in this teaching I believe that all of us um, are seeking ways or means by which uh, we can accomplish complete enlightened state we call Buddhahood for the benefit of both self and others. So how can we achieve the complete enlightened state uh, if you ask what is involved in the ways or the means by which uh, we can actualize complete enlightenment. As I often explain and emphasize that we need to uh, practice accumulation of uh, merit and insight or wisdom. So we need, in other words, to uh, fulfill uh, what is known as the two types of accumulation, accumulation of uh, merit or positive energy and accumulation of uh, insight or wisdom. And we also need to do purification practice, which basically involves purifying ourselves of uh, the two types of mental obscuration. Obscuration to personal nirvana or freedom, liberation, and obscuration to omniscient uh, uh, wisdom. So when you start to do it, you will be able to do it. And then you will be able to do it. And then you will be able to do it. Now, to be able to engage in uh, those two uh, practices, uh, such as uh, accumulation 
of uh, merit and wisdom and purification of uh, the two types of mental obscuration, it is uh, not only very important, but uh, essential for us to have a uh, uh, precious human life and rebirth, not only here and now, but also in our successive uh, rebirths. So that's why we often uh, talk about uh, the need to create causes and conditions to be able to find uh, fortunate rebirth uh, in this particular context, meaning precious human life or rebirth you know, in our uh, successive uh, lifetimes so that we would be able to pursue uh, practices of uh, accumulation and uh, purification. That's why we have to do this. 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 We have to so where do we find, uh, you know, the, such what we call spatial life basis, literally translating, to be able to pursue uh, spirituality and spiritual development? As we often talk about uh, uh, six types of uh, sentient beings or migrators in samsara, secret existence, human uh, beings are part of that whole universe. Uh, which consists of six types of sentient beings. So it's only in the human uh, world, if you will, uh, we find uh, uh, the special life basis for uh, spirituality. So even in the case of human world, any kind of human life, if you ask, uh, would that be a special life basis we're talking about? But just being a human being does not mean we have uh, uh, acquired or obtained uh, uh, what we call precious human life. Uh, definitionally, uh, precious human life is uh, a human life uh, that is uh, endowed with uh, what are called eight freedoms or leisures and ten enriching factors. These eight wonderful qualities of uh, a special, uh, I should say, human life, if you will, uh, constitute the life basis, the special life basis uh, to pursue and develop uh, uh, spirituality. So if you ask how can we find uh, precious human life or rebirth as great uh, Indian uh, Master Arya Nagarjuna uh, states in his uh, precious garland or Ratna Avali, and Kesila quoted uh, the lines from his memory. Uh, basically, uh, the line states it is from uh, negativity or negative karmic actions that we find all kinds of uh, suffering and unfortunate rebirths. Uh, in contrast, it is from positive uh, actions that we find, uh, you know, happiness, peace, and fortunate uh, rebirth. So, so that tambo ngaran so ani dinro konfat thobe sheba ta migi vel dongle kuin tele gile dinro thamke san kanong itza ni che za tang ngaran so ngi song she go chi ka go ngi song she mi she chi ta she ndi pa she ya go pa ka go as we pay close attention to uh, what Arya Nagarjuna uh, has said, which I quoted just now to you, uh, first thing what we need to do is uh, we have to find uh, ways to close the door to unfortunate states of rebirth. So basically what we need to, need to do is stop creating 
uh, negativities or negative uh, karmic actions. So uh, that things and that me give it up, me give it, me give it later ten that me do it in shame you already don't talk you are so that me do it in shame you are already don't talk you are already don't talk you are already don't talk you in other words, that if uh, we create negative uh, karmic actions, they lead to unfortunate rebirths. They don't lead to fortunate uh, rebirths. And so which means we need to stop creating and accumulating negative uh, karmic actions. Of course, negativity consists of uh, innumerable actions, but as we often talk about, uh, at a very basic, uh, you know, foundational level, if you will, uh, we need to stop creating the three negativities of uh, the body or three uh, negative physical karmic actions and uh, four negative karmic actions of the speech and three negative karmic actions of the mind. So basically we need to stop creating those negativities physically, verbally, and mentally. That the and the chance of magic, you can change your inner at the kitchen, but a penna does lose a little number of sums in the so good that tumbles are so curry. So you can let the lane rung so care, but rung so much in a yin of a cune, so a chin dash situation could so king it to the rung give a chagres. Tant and do rung pay cooking to do a chagres. And I think uh, most of you uh, know what the ten uh, negative comic actions are body, speech, and mind. But uh, uh, it's really important for us uh, to understand them so that we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can, um, uh, so that such understanding will guide our actions of uh, everyday uh, life. Uh, now we talk about uh, three negative actions of the body and the first one is uh, the negative action of uh, killing. Uh, and uh, so the negative action of killing, it could be done by oneself, that means uh, oneself kills someone. Or it could also be uh, instigating or uh, hiring someone to kill someone. So in either case, it is the negativity of killing and uh, uh, relatively speaking, you know, asking someone to kill for you would be more worse uh, negative uh, action of killing than doing it uh, uh, the same action uh, oneself. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, making others do, uh, you know, killing for us, I mean, we should understand it's like, you know, we uh, entrust this job to someone. You know, we ourselves couldn't do it, and we say, okay, so can you do this for me? And then when the other person kills, uh, so then it is, uh, you know, worse in the sense that not only the other person has created uh, the negativity, but we ourselves are completely involved uh, in it. But, but uh, if someone, without our asking him or her to do the job, if someone kills someone for us from their side, but then that is not what we call instigating or hiring uh, someone to kill for us. ตาร่างเกตาตบจิเสกรวสเป็นร่างเกมาเสบเสนเมยินลพาลัมติเสกสิตะนี่อันนี้ติดิบตะกะร่างคันเดสจุงเวนะซัมเอ่อติตบเส
Lupongo Jusan Majene at the King, that rank a Sabbath that you were chugging at us. So one might uh, I mean, uh, wonder and raise the question that if I tell, you know, ask someone to kill someone for me, I'm really not doing the actual action, you know, but that person is. So how could it be the same? How could it be that I also accumulate the negativity of killing? Uh, in addition to the other person's, uh, you know, uh, act of killing. Uh, in the treasury of knowledge, Abhidhamma Kosha by the great Indian master Acharya Vasubandhu, uh, it states that Gisela quoted the lines from his memory, and which gives us an example that, let's say, uh, one does not go into the actual battlefield, one sends the soldiers to do the job. But as one commands soldiers to go into the battlefield and kill enemies, and when they do that, the one who has given the order, who has not physically been in the battlefield and not really going through all the uh, risk and everything, that person also accumulates, you see, the negativities of killing uh, to the extent that the soldiers in the battlefield kill uh, you know, a uh, number of enemies. So for details, uh, you know, you need to, to uh, look up in uh, the concerned section of in Lamrim uh, treatises, Lamrim is uh, a Tibetan term which means stages of path. It is in, considered now a genre in Tibetan Buddhism. It's a practice guide. So if you look up in the uh, practices of uh, intermediate level practitioners where we focus uh, a lot on uh, law of karma and its results or outcomes. So it, in that particular section, we find uh, more details about uh, uh, good and bad karmic actions and their outcomes. Mm-hmm. No. Now, in the case of um, uh, ten negative uh, actions of body, spirit, and mind, uh, if one has not taken monastic uh, ordination, uh, in which case, uh, uh, you know, if one uh, indulges in the sexual activity, uh, that does not involve necessarily uh, the negative action of uh, uh, what called uh, uh, negative action of uh, uh, breaking uh, 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 celibacy, if you will, because one is a lay person has not taken uh, that particular uh, vow. Uh, whereas the, the, it would be a different case in the case of uh, monastics who have committed themselves to abide by celibacy. So any kind of sexual activity is breaking their vows and consists of uh, uh, negativity. Uh, so for lay uh, practitioners or lay people in general, I should say, uh, Buddha has not prohibited uh, sexual intimacy. So when the, uh, those who are not uh, monastics uh, uh, in, in, involved in sexual intimacy uh, with uh, their uh, what we call uh, legitimate partners, then it does not involve uh, negative karmic action. That being said, even as lay people, if one were to have affairs with others' partners, then 
Uh, you know, participate in sexual intimacy with your uh, legitimate partners. But on a particular day, if you have uh, taken one day vows which involve, you know, uh, prohibition of uh, sex, but on that particular day, if one were to indulge in any kind of sexual activity, now that would involve uh, uh, negativity of uh, uh, body. That <laughs> lawyer. So sexual misconduct, which is a generic term we use, uh, that includes a number of things, and in a particular case it would be adultery, it is a negative karmic action, but uh, it is something that one personally uh, has to get involved uh, in the act. It's not like a killing. You know, killing, one may not do it, but one may ask someone to kill, as I said. But in the case of adultery, one cannot assign or ask someone to do it for you. Uh, so it's something you uh, personally get involved in. That is so true. That is so true. So then there is uh, the negativity of uh, uh, stealing, uh, which is uh, literally defined as taking what is not given to you. And now uh, this is like uh, similar to killing in that uh, not only can one steal things from others, but one can also ask others to steal things for oneself. Uh, so so really my point here is that we need to study, educate ourselves about uh, negative karmic actions and uh, so that we are able to uh, stop creating negativities. Uh, because if uh, we create negativities, uh, uh, then these negativities uh, lead to more suffering and misery, uh, which uh, obviously we don't, uh, uh, don't want. So that's <laughs> the so not only that we stop creating uh, negative comic actions, but we also need to do the positive actions, which are the opposites of negative actions. Why? Because we are seeking uh, uh, positive outcomes or results, such as uh, uh, finding a fortunate rebirth as a human being. So for that, we definitely need to create uh, positive comic actions. เอ่อซงซาจิเจรุมเบเจกานังยอเรสลัมโชดุบาลาอันนี้ตีดุบีกะเต้นดิชะบะกิเอ่อทอกกุเรสลัมโชดุลซิงยิซามิเต้มันย
for one to create causes and conditions for precious human rebirth or life, uh, you know, uh, in successive uh, lifetimes. But then, if you dig a pollen shebel up, Papangu at Solangu at the shebel, that is Hegu your bus. So the bottom line is this, that in order for us to apply ourselves into uh, the uh, practices of abandonment and cultivation, meaning uh, what are the things we should not do and we should abandon, and what are the things we should adopt and we should cultivate and enhance, now the first thing we need to educate ourselves in these uh, matters, because uh, without education we really don't know you know, what we should do and what we should abandon and what we should do and what we should cultivate. No, no. That then they say, well, that was only a push. You know, that then they get any position. I say, we put with that and that KTG, uh, San Mukandi Tango, the Senna, rank any Luta Mata Yichi, any Lake Argy Shavina, Yel Nuguna, that they may give you ladies to teach a German Congress. So of course education takes time and there's the, you know, but in the meantime what we really need to do is, because we don't know much, but we have to keep on reminding ourselves that I should not do anything that, uh, you know, hurts, uh, that hurts, uh, you know, others. Because hurting others, any kind of action we do uh, through the use of our body, spirit, and mind that hurts others is uh, uh, negativity. No, no. That rank luta ngata yiche to sumbo te pe jyo tang ne ane yen la pen pa jyo ba jyo pa pen tuk do nas da tal ne ba ne ba jyo da pen pa pen tuk do na ane te gewi le cha gyo ares. And but extension of that sort of idea, the other side of that idea is that if we use our body, speech, and mind in any way that really promotes the uh, well-being of others, that benefits others, such actions are to be understood as uh, positive uh, karmic actions. Um, Shaw Karishev in the till, Nugu do tang, Pink do Pachit Hakogro was. So, except for, uh, you know, very young uh, children, we as adults uh, have, uh, I think, certain common sense in us that we uh, I mean, generally know what are the things we should not do which really hurt and, uh, you know, hurt others or damage. And, you know, others' lives and properties and so on. And what are the things that we could do to benefit others? As much as we emphasize the need to and uh, uh, the essentiality of finding uh, what we call special life basis for spiritual development, which basically is finding precious human life, but we must also keep in mind that once we have it, it is equally important, if not more, for us to use it uh, properly uh, for spiritual, uh, you know, growth. That chair number tamba drum medusiati, and the chair number tamba yina yang, drunkey rang the ton some tante number tamba drum chair, the number tamba drum the hundred some tongue over it. So we need to see that uh, as we do our practice, we are engaging in what we call literally pure a practice of uh, dharma or spirituality. Now, of course, uh, you know, theoretically speaking, uh, a particular spirituality may be pure, you know, in uh, itself. But it is possible that the way we put that into practice may not be pure. You know, the way we practice that pure spirituality could become unpure or impure, uh, you know, practice. So it's really important for us to learn about how to do our practice uh, purely. Uh, so that, 
so now you can ask me how can we engage in what is called pure practice of uh, dharma or spirituality. Uh, what are the things we could do or we should do so that our practice is proper and pure? Well, number one, it is a must for us to cultivate a pure motivation because motivation plays a very significant role in our uh, spirituality and spiritual development. So pure motivation in the sense that we should be more concerned with uh, the well-being of uh, future lives rather than the uh, you know, interest of this lifetime. So if we are so much attached to the marvels of this lifetime and engage in uh, spiritual practice, our motivation may not necessarily be uh, pure. Whereas if we are concerned with, we are really detaching ourselves from the marvels of this lifetime, detaching, just minded, meaning undiluted in that sense, uh, not getting isolated, uh, footnote, my first footnote after a long time, uh, is, uh, and then thinking about the well-being or the betterment of future lifetimes, that kind of pure motivation is really, it, 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 uh, uh, it uh, how do you say, it's uh, very important uh, to do uh, for our pure practice of Dharma. Oh. So, that, all right, that thing, you know, you know, you are rest. So, Jeeva Dogi, you know, Najoba, you know, Jeeva Dogi, you know, that thing, you know, 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 you Chenabatavichi uh, let me give you an example uh, from Lamrim to illustrate the point how even if uh, the practice that one does belongs to not only um, Mahayana practice but uh, actually to the Vajrayana or esoteric tantric practice, which is the highest level of Buddhist practice, but due to one's uh, you know, uh, you know, one's uh, uh, impure motivation, or the uh, rather, I should say, one's inadequate uh, level of motivation. That kind of uh, profound practice may only lead to a very, uh, relatively speaking, a small uh, spiritual outcome. Now, there is this story uh, recorded in the Lamrim treatises that once there was a, a practitioner of uh, He Vajra uh, meditational deity. Now the He Vajra Tantra belongs to highest yoga Buddhist Tantra, which is called Maha Anuttara Yoga Tantra. It's the highest level practice. So which means He Vajra practice not only belongs to Mahayana Buddhism, but it belongs to the Vajrayana Buddhism uh, within that. It's the highest level practice. So one would assume that so that practice is extremely profound, and it would uh, you know help one to find a complete enlightened state even in one lifetime. It's that that kind of profound uh, you know a practice. However, that practitioner, uh, due to his uh, like a, how should I say inadequate, it was not so much the impure motivation, but it was inadequate uh, level of motivation. Uh, that uh, he only was able to accomplish, uh, relatively speaking, a small uh, spiritual realization outcome, which is uh, literally uh, translated as uh, which means uh, the uh, stream enterer. Because in the uh, Shirvakayan Buddhism, they talk about different levels of realization. Uh, sometimes they talk about eight different levels of uh, 
Gunshu, meaning, meaning stream, enterers, is the literal translation. I know it needs a lot of explanation, but I'm just a translator here. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Gunshu data is abiding by the outcome of a stream enterer is one of the eight uh, uh, enterers. And so he just only accomplished that. So now what happened in this case is that even though the practice he was following was the highest level Buddhist practice, which could find him complete enlightened state in one lifetime, but instead of that outcome, it only led to a very small outcome that he could have achieved through Sharvakayana practice. See, so that's what it does when the level of motivation is inadequate. Because <laughs> Uh, maybe I should have given you a uh, little uh, background to this uh, you know, story of he was a practitioner. Uh, it was uh, in the 11th uh, century uh, when great Indian master Atisha, whose complete name is called Dipankar Shirijan Atisha, uh, he was invited to Tibet. And often when he uh, had visitors from India, then um, Atisha would ask them, Okay, what news you have brought from India? Because he wanted, uh, uh, you know, the news, uh, you know, from his, uh, you know, home country. And so, uh, so in one of those days, uh, so a visitor from India said, well, these days in India, one of the things people are talking about is how a Hevajra practitioner, he landed himself in a small level outcome called uh, abiding by an outcome of stream enterer, even though his practice was he was a practice. And um, Atisha was, uh, I mean, he kind of uh, expressed his disappointment, and he said, well, that's primarily because he lacked altruistic bodhicitta motivation. That's what happened. <laughs> So Atisha said, you know, the reason why he ended up in that kind of a predicament situation, if you could call that, it's just because he did not develop bodhicitta motivation. Okay. My Sanjus Sen Sungu at the home by Sanjus Sen and Tule Tumbi, that was not your Sungu Amarita, that and what? I think uh, yeah, that was Kishore was trying to say the same thing again, you know, because the way Atisha expressed it, it seems like, well, because he did not, uh, you know, have the kind of bodhicitta that, uh, you know, yeah, you know, I have been uh, focusing on. Of course, Atisha never claimed that he had a bodhicitta, but the way he implied is, you know, we can understand the implication is that Atisha really developed bodhicitta, uh, which... The other hair was the practitioner was very much lacking, and therefore he ended up in a uh, in that particular predicament. Oh, no, that in the bush. That ring and ring around that kanga, someone or that was great. That can't understand that the humans. So I have talked about these things uh, with the motivation that these things may uh, be, you know, useful and beneficial to all of us. And uh, so because of time factor, and as I said, so we really need to pay attention to uh, the negative karmic actions and to study about them. Of course, I didn't have time to go through all the ten negativities of body, speech, and mind, but I did mention three negativities of the body, and uh, the details are in uh, Lamrim uh, treatises. Well, uh, that cousin something, when you see you, you can take a land my sumber, right? No. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
Uh, just to recapitulate a little bit what uh, you know we were discussing uh, last Sunday, uh, those two cousins uh, uh, from uh, Pimbo area uh, visited uh, Great Don Temba at Ratting uh, Monastery. Uh, which is the seat monastery of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Dom Temba and uh, Katamba tradition. Uh, and uh, so they, uh, you know, uh, asked uh, Dom Temba uh, for uh, particular uh, teachings. They said, well, we witnessed that this last gathering of uh, monks here, and they're here because they renounced worldly life and they're pursuing complete enlightenment. And uh, we have come to pursue the same uh, goal. And could you kindly give us the complete, uh, you know, the, how should you say, the teachings on how to do that uh, that you have received from the great master uh, in Atisha? Please uh, do not uh, conceal or hide anything from us. You know, be frank and open and give us uh, uh, the instruction. That is a tactical lane than any drum de jay in Juniker. That's not those in my summer. That Tambo and Cho Matapa Tang, Lee Jundi Mondo Gums, Summerta, Cho Matapa Mambo Gums, and Lee Jundi Heb, Gombe Heb, Jenny, Lee Jundi Mondo Gums. So in response to their request, uh, Dom Tamba said, uh, first, uh, you must uh, uh, meditate repeatedly, many times on uh, death and impermanence and uh, law of uh, karma and its outcomes. That's why I think it's a huge impact. I'm going to tell you, 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 I remember that uh, last week I told you that uh, one of the powerful ways to meditate on uh, death and impermanence of life uh, is uh, uh, consists of uh, focusing on what is called the three basic principles or the fundamental principles, each of them supported by uh, three uh, valid reasons. So there are nine reasons and three basic principles. And uh, so that particular structure of meditation on the death and impermanence of life is very powerful. And I suggested or advise you that you should, uh, you know, uh, how should I say, refer to or consult your Lamrim treatises uh, on this matter. <laughs> Uh, just to sort of uh, start off, uh, I'm going to introduce the three basic principles or the fundamental principles in this uh, meditation on the death and impermanence of life, but then I will ask you to go and read Lamrin for the nine uh, reasons supporting the three uh, principles. One of the three basic uh, fundamental principles that we should focus on is the certainty of death. In other words, death is certain. And there's nothing mystery about that. And uh, if anybody is born, then he or she will eventually have to face death. It doesn't matter in between who we are. We could be rich, poor, educated, uneducated, powerful, weak, and whatever. But uh, once we are born, the final thing that uh, we, uh, we uh, encounter is uh, death. So therefore, there should not be any doubts about uh, you know, uh, about uh, uh, the certainty of uh, death. That is a sure thing to happen. So 
So as we meditate on this particular basic principle, okay, death is certain. So we keep on meditating on it. And then it might convince us that, okay, I got it. One day I'm going to die for sure. That in this and that thing to what Pasay and Chedo, that that Nimba to Congress, so we are such a Nimba to Congress, Karis and Namchi Name Sambas. Nimba to the Mani Petit, Kadishi Game Taki and Mendus, that thing we were the Congress. So once we realize that, okay, one day I'm going to die for sure, and I get it now, you know, and I have not, uh, you know, how should I say, any doubt, no, any doubt about this matter. So that is certain, and so one day that will happen. Well, now what we really need to uh, consider relating to that is we don't know when. When is that one day is going to come? So the time of death is uncertain. So uncertainty of the time of death. Yes, we are going to die one day, but when is that one day? We really don't know. So it's very important for us to consider the second basic principle in this meditation called uncertainty of the time of death. So that is going to be the time of death. That is going to be the time of death. That is going to be the time of death. That is going to be the time of death. あの、先生書きにペンがアメンがれ、ペンツマシンのメバシンがアメンがれ、ね、シャンドクトワス。書きまっせんのランサーにきロードンダワムルムメバシンランサーシャンドクトワス。あたがなにいくたか、のね、テ
Lomar nandu mame hins. Lomar kecil mame jia mina ko kasi deme te ta lansa te jokon doji rendo was te. Tina gi es kono. You know, many great examples are provided in uh, the Buddhist literatures to explain about how the time of death is uncertain and we really don't know uh, when it's going to happen to us. And great Nagarjuna uh, uh, gives this example uh, of how our life is, uh, metaphorically speaking, like a burning candle exposed to the wind. So if we think of uh, this, you know, candlelight, uh, you know, in the wind place, now the wind can blow out the flame any time. Who can predict that? It's very uncertain. So that can be gone in your tongue with my tagas, and you don't take your tagas and do your marriage. But you know what, Tony? Thunder and him, my son, that can be a lodger and you see a tongue, but the so as we talk about in how long should we continue meditating on these things, of course, until we truly feel it, you know, in our heart and mind. We may know it intellectually, okay, we are going to die one day, well, we don't know, we don't know when this is going to happen, but that's not enough, see, intellectual uh, exercise and understanding or uh, the considering these matters is not enough. We have to meditate on these principles to the extent that it really, I should say, uh, we feel these principles in our bones. And now we really feel this to the extent that, I mean, I'm really, I, I'm, I, I can't be sure that, you know, whether I'm going to last today. See, it, the death could strike me any time, even today. So that's the kind of experience when we get the impact of that on our, through our meditation. That's what we call is, is really uh, effective meditation uh, on the impermanence. Mm-hmm. So as we meditate repeatedly on the, the uncertainty of time of death, that we really get it now, even experientially, not just intellectually, but uh, really subjectively and through deep experiences where really we feel that I mean, we have this awareness of death and dying to the extent that we think, okay, I really don't know when it's going to hit me even today. Okay? So when we are at that deep experience level, then the next thing we really consider, the basic principle, is what will stand by us, you know, at death. Well, no, that deal is in that such as somebody... So when we consider what can stand by us at death, then the, the third basic principle says, except dharma or spirituality, nothing else can stand by us at that time. So when we consider this third basic principle, what can help us at death, then we come to realize that we could be very successful uh, in our worldly achievements that we have so much uh, wealth and resources, well, they're not going to be, you know, help us not to die. They, 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 you know, they really they are not of no use at that time. Or we could be successful in uh, cultivating friends and supporters, that we have so many loving and caring friends, family members and friends and so forth, but at that, they really couldn't help us, even if they very much want to. So all of these things, that worldly achievements, 
uh, you know, they are of no much use, and substantively speaking, at the time of death. Kiwi dula padu, so kangu ya tate rangu chua te, so kangu ya kato ya mea pujita santongolis. So we have to consider the fact that when the death strikes us, it is very personal and intimate in that nobody can stop it, you know, uh, at that point of time. Aneta, think, aneta, nisi kishu kena dekendo. Nema aneta, jebo tiku tsumo le aneta, lanjo be tiku ta hako gore, chura aneta, chura aneta ime, te mege tsu ni shiba res, shisa res. Me and me sing the introduction race. Yes. And those in the dark, Najo Betta, Mushik to the Zinni to see some way. Two mother, two mother. Yes. Uh, let me tell you a story to, uh, to illustrate this point. Uh, once, um, you know, there was uh, a king and a queen and a meditator or yogi. And the yogi uh, was able to see that. Uh, the queen will die of, uh, you know, fire. You know, due to some fire destruction or due to some fire that her life would come to an end. Yes. Uh, that is the fire of the queen. The queen is the queen 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 of the queen. So the yogi uh, honestly uh, told the queen that, uh, I mean, you have to be very careful with, uh, in some sense, you know, I mean, he said, your life will be ended by, he didn't say careful, will be ended by, you know, some fire. It was fire will kill you. Well, then Queen thought, well, that's not, uh, you know, too much of a bad news. You know, I can just protect myself very well from fire. So what he did, she did was, uh, you know, she asked to, to build a beautiful mansion of glasses, you know, glass mansion right in the middle of water. So it's surrounded by water, and she made sure that there's nothing compostable in the mansion. I mean, nothing, anything to do with the fire. Okay, so she thought she would be totally safe. Well, that's such a safe place she created for herself. Ah, that condition is an any morang the tulu to the any the shego to the jaya. She says a shego to me me any uh any uh any any she hung her, I mean, robes and, you know, clothes uh, uh, on the glass wall, and so she felt very safe. She, she thought, okay, how could fire, you know, get me? You know, there's nothing to be burnt, you know, there's nothing that is combustible in the mansion, and right in the middle of the water, it's surrounded by water, so she felt kind of safe. But what happened was that the sunlight you know, sparks this, like, it's, I think some of the glasses are the magnifying glass, so, you know, it's, and it started fire with her clothes and her robes, so which caught fire, and the whole mansion, uh, I mean, was dismantled, and she died so in that particular uh, situation. So, that's what well, with each of the basic principles, we have to consider many reasons to support the principle so that it makes sense not only intellectually but very experientially through repeated meditation. And then we come to really conclude that in the case of the first one, we said, okay, now the death is sure to come. In the case of the second principle, we say the time of death is truly uncertain. Really, I don't know when it's going to come. Nobody knows it. And then what can stand by us at the time of death, right? Nothing but Dharma. And uh, so as this story I just told you, that shows that when the death comes, nothing can stop it. Nobody can stop in a death. No, no. That's the 
Once we really truly uh, feel it in our bones uh, the, that the time of death is uncertain, uh, then I think it really will prevent, uh, you know, it, it becomes a powerful antidote, at least temporarily overcoming our attachment and clinging to the marvels of this lifetime, all the things of this life. And it will also prevent us from, you know, indulging in, getting involved in uh, negative uh, karmic actions. Uh, in the Lamrim treatises, uh, as we uh, you know, deal with uh, death and impermanence of life, so many examples are given to uh, make a point that when death strikes us, there is no place in samsara that we can hide and find ourselves safe. So that then the Lamrim talks about how when the death strikes you, we cannot escape into some kind of outer space, you know, maybe today in the cyber space and stay safe there. No, it will get us there. We cannot go, to, you know, in, a, in some kind of a, under the ocean. Maybe we can ride a submarine and submerge into the ocean. No, that will get us there. We cannot hide behind the mountains and uh, in the hills because it gets us there. So there is no place, literally, uh, where we can feel safe when the death strikes us. So, Tati. Meditating on death and impermanence of life is not uh, just a scare tactic. It's not just to scare us or make our life more miserable, as if we have nothing better to do. You know, when we study and contemplate, uh, you know, suffering nature of samsara, death and dying meditation, this is not because, you know, we have nothing better to do, so we make ourselves, you know, down in more misery, you know, make ourselves miserable and get freaked out like anything. That's not the point. The point is that usually we really don't pay enough attention to these matters and issues that we really are, I should remain unaware of the situation we find ourselves in. So it's like life goes on, like, you know, as if everything is okay. But when we think about and meditate on death and impermanence of life, for example, when it really, I should say, motivates us from within inside us, then we really get scared. That's true. But that sense of fear can be utilized in a very positive way to get out of misery and samsara. Mm. And often, uh, you know, we don't like to hear um, about negative things, which we consider, okay, talking too much about suffering, that's really so pessimistic and negative. I don't like it, you know. Talking about death and the impermanence of life, well, I don't like it. That's very pessimistic and, uh, you know, it's very really discomforting. So we just want to be left alone in some sense so that, uh, you know, we just talk about nice stuff, what we consider as nice things to listen to. But then the fact of the matter is, as we avoid, we become very avoidant of these matters, but that's sure to come, see? And so once we find ourselves in the suffering situations, now we realize, oh, oh my gosh, you see, this is too much. I wish I knew before so that I didn't have to come into this situation. Now what can I do? Well, it's late now. So that's why it's much better to educate ourselves on these matters 
and uh, take uh, the matters, as you would say, in our hand, so that we know how to deal with this thing, so that, as we say, prevention is better than cure, so that we don't have to go into unfortunate states of rebirth where suffering is very intense. So now you see the context and the purpose of uh, talking about and meditating on suffering nature of samsara, death and dying, impermanence of life, and so on. No, no. That the day gone begin that day. That day, the result. That that the young that we need to need to be so so that right over is. So, but if we really deal with this matter now, then you know we could uh, expect better outcomes. You see, as Kesha says, we get a better results. You know, that's what we want. No, no. That day, that was the instant. That day, any choice, any thing, we let them come. Because, uh, you say that. Uh, I think that will do for today and uh, so, you know we began with pure uh, motivation and uh, now we dedicate uh, you know we need to how to say, conclude our session and practice with uh, pure dedication ジョイユノブチェベ、天地シェブタマナジュクセキャベテンバタ。トジギンドトダメミヒルドヨンワシュ。アネ、チェドンケキショーポモナムチ。フンディジシャワナミスムイスタント。アンドバイタ。ガチ